How's it going guys? Killcast here. Welcome back to another World War Z build guide. Uh, today we're going to be looking at a different side of the fixer. Um, but before we get into it, I want to go ahead and say thank you guys so much for all the support you've shown the channel recently. And if you're new to the channel, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you want to see more. Uh, like the video if you like this one in particular. Likes help out the channel immensely. The more likes a video gets, the more it's broadcast to a wider audience, the more people are able to view it, and just the more it helps the channel grow in general. Uh, comment down below how you feel about this build, maybe if you run one similar or uh, if you'd like me to do a different kind let me know guys down in the comments um if there's any kind of challenges you want me to look at or maybe if you're having trouble on certain parts of the game you'd like me to make a specific guide for that part of the game whatever you guys want just let me know um but without further ado let's get into it today we are looking at explosive ammo fixer uh for those of you that just want a generic cut and paste build and you don't want to know anymore you just want to know what your build should look like this is it if you want to cut out now no hard feelings uh, but for those of you that want to understand why we picked the skills that we did like always stick around we'll check it out um, this isn't going to be an in-depth fixer guide because i've already done one of those this one is going to be geared more towards um i'd probably say the six goal difficulty because ammo is very scarce and so are the equipment bags and this is going to help out your team immensely uh, in that instance and also with just clearing potential in general but let's go ahead and get into it first off here we got armory using a supply bag gives 25 percent chance to restore one equipment charge this right here is fantastic right off the bat first skill we get and it is absolutely beautiful because what this does is for those of you that are uh like more of the veteran players or that are not new to the six school difficulty you know that the fixers uh the masking grenade fixers and the medics take priority in the supply bags because they have the best equipment to ensure your survival while yes maltov c4 claymores and all that are good to have they don't ensure your survivability as well as like a masking grenade or stem pistol would you're usually going to be leaving the supply bags alone to let your fixer or your medic have them with this though what it does is it allows everyone else to have a chance to proc their equipment especially those of you that don't run pickpocket um i understand there's quite a few of you out there so what this does is it, it helps you restore your equipment that's not saying that uh, your masking grenade fixers can't use it and your medics can't use it of course they can because they're going to need to and that just gives them all the more chances to proc their equipment as well so it's just an awesome skill right off the bat next we go stand by me increase firearm damage by 100 percent for 10 seconds when reviving or unpinning a teammate this isn't always going to come in handy um also the other two here are masking grenade effects and we're not running with masking grenades so by default even if you don't think the skill is helpful it would help a lot more than these two since we're not running with masking grenades. Next here, uh, I go with Cloakroom. Reviving a teammate grants masking effect for three seconds for both of you. Masking in the six gold difficulty is very strong, very helpful, and I would highly suggest running with this. Although it is very hard to pull off a full revive um, because you don't really get much downtime during swarms and such. This skill, if you can pull off a full revive, could potentially get your entire team back on its feet. And it has happened that way several different times for me and uh, i would just highly recommend it uh, next please stand up you got to go with it so there really isn't much to talk about there but if everyone on your team is down you're able to stand back up um as long as you haven't done it already in the previous 60 seconds next i went with gunner here start with sporting carbine pac 15 for those of you that watch my playthroughs if you haven't please go ahead and check them out i got six gold playthroughs for uh, New York, Jerusalem, and Tokyo. Uh, my Moscow footage corrupted. And uh, for those of you that have seen my playthroughs, you'll understand that I love my carbine. It's just a very good gun. It's got very good accuracy, high damage. Um, for those of you that aren't a giant fan of it, I would highly recommend going with my round one. It helps out your team immensely. And since you're going to be giving them explosive ammo anyways, this will be giving them more. So I probably would not go wheatgrass. I would go either my round one or gunner depending on your preference of gun that you use uh, next I'm going with one for the road and where you might think pickpocket would be a good choice here because it's, this is a very offensive fixer we're not playing very defensive at all the 90 second cooldown is really gonna hinder you there and when you already have your 25% chance to proc your equipment by using your bags may as well have two of them because uh, there's been several instances where we're holding during an extraction endpoint so have you whatever you want to call them um, I've been able to have upwards of four or five explosive bags down at one time without running pickpocket on this character. So with that being said, I would definitely check out one for the road. I feel like it's the best choice here, my opinion, but if you don't like it, 
100% go with pickpocket those of you that have uh, watched a few of my videos know how I feel about it pickpocket is just a very good generic skill to have because if you kill 15 zombies now you have a 100% chance to refill your equipment charge and at no point in the game are you ever going to go eh let's not kill some zombies that's the whole point of the game that's why you came here so pickpocket is always a good choice it's just in this specific build I feel like one for the road is going to do better but this is again up to preference if you feel like pickpocket is going to better this build for you go with that next we have instant replay anyone that uses your supply bag restores 20 percent of their primary weapon ammunition the base is 10 percent an extra bit of ammo is always helpful especially when you're giving them explosive ammo for those of you that are new to six goal difficulty or even for those of you that aren't and have played it several times you'll know that the ammo boxes now have uses so you can't just run up to the ammo box and spam collecting ammo and constantly be full ammo like you used to be able to. You kind of have to pick and choose when you go to the ammo box because if you use it too much it'll run dry and that's not good. You don't want to be left with zero ammo. So if you can supply ammo to your team to keep them from having to make that journey to the ammo box, that's always going to help out. Uh, your team will love you for this, trust me. Next we have efficiency. Supply bag contains 25% more explosive ammo. Uh, the masking grenade part doesn't really affect us at all in this specific build. This right here is just allowing us to get more ammo from it. Again, it's, it's one of your red skills. You can't really choose what else to get here. That is all there is, so we're not going to touch on it that much. Next, I got lightning hands. All semi-automatic rifles were low speed increased by 25%. Again, those of you that have seen my builds before or my playthroughs know that I love my one-shot guns, my semi-autos. They just have so much penetration, so much power, and they're very, very accurate. Very easy to pull off headshots with. Reloading them faster, of course. Again, for those of you that have seen the playthroughs, I reload my gun every second that I have downtime. So if I'm not shooting, I'm reloading because I never want to run completely dry and this helps out a lot. Power shot here is it's a decent choice, but most of your semi-automatic rifles are going to have max, if not very, very close to max penetration as it is. So there's really no point in trying to push it even higher when it's already at max. That coupled with the fact that we're using explosive ammo, we're thinning out the herd quite a bit. We don't need the extra penetration here. Fourth of July is the next one I chose. Supply bag contains 25% more explosive ammo, base is 20%. And uh, what this is gonna do is allow your teammates to use them more. And the more chances they get to use them, the more it is going to be refilling their actual ammo for their primary. And the more chances they're gonna have over here with armory to proc their equipment to get their equipment to come back so they can use it more so overall more chances to use uh, our explosive ammo bag is going to benefit the team greatly next i'm running with my round two increased carried ammo capacity for heavy weapons by 10 percent for all teammates you might be thinking well why aren't you running with the payload anyone that's played the game for a significant amount of time knows that the game does a decent job of throwing heavy weapons at you the payload rifle while it is good it's not necessarily the best, especially if you're running levels like Tokyo, especially the early levels of Tokyo where it's tighter quarters. You don't really need a payload. Um, payloads work really well on, say, like a Jerusalem and stuff when you're holding the spill gate where you need the long range explosive. But I don't know. That's just my preference. I think that I would much rather run with a heavy shotgun or an RPG. It has a lot more clearing potential. It's not as focused to fire. You want your explosives to do a big area of effect as opposed to small. And uh, if I'm going to be hitting a small crowd, I'd rather just be using a heavy shotgun anyways. So I feel like the payload kind of falls off a bit. It's still useful, especially if you have nothing else. It is useful. But I feel like if I can give more heavy weapon ammo to my team, I'm getting more bang for my buck here because then you have four members because not just three because eventually you will get a heavy weapon so you have four members running with more heavy weapon stuff as opposed to you just starting with one for yourself i don't know i feel like it helps out the team more especially what this skill can do is it gives rpgs two shots keep forgetting where my camera starts two shots as opposed to just the one shot and uh, that can be so helpful especially when uh, you got hordes coming and they're pyramiding up Usually there's one or two pyramids, so if you have two shots in an RPG, you could potentially take out two pyramids instead of just one, and that helps out so, so much. Especially like on a cruise control where you got your very first holding room and they're pyramiding up onto the balcony. Most times you got two pyramids going at once. If you have an RPG that has two shots, you could take out both of those in one setting. That's going to help out your team a ton. It's going to keep the zombies off you. They're never going to get to you. It's just a really good choice in my opinion. Uh, last year, corporate power nap. Unequipped weapon automatically reloads every 10 seconds for all teammates. 
This one never really helps me because I don't use or I don't swap my guns very often. Aside from when I when I'll switch to my heavy weapon, this is mostly going to help out like your gunslingers, your hellraisers, maybe your medics in the team, but especially your gunslingers. This, this works really well with them. Um, overall, I'd like to say that this class goes hand in hand with fixers that are running masking grenade because you have more chances to give them their masking grenades back and potentially you could just camp a more ideal spot in any of your extractions or horde scenarios. Um, maybe where the ammo box isn't placed in the most ideal spot, you can just ignore the ammo box. You can become your own ammo box and uh, create a better holding point because I know a lot of people feel like they're forced into holding at the ammo box in a lot of different situations and sometimes it's not in the best spot. With this build, you can just completely ignore it if you want to. And like I said, coupled with a masking grenade fixer, if you can get a masking grenade fixer to constantly proc their masking grenades due to your ammo bags, you can just camp one spot, be invisible, and constantly be shooting explosive ammo. That coupled with the fact that explosive ammo absolutely shreds hordes and special infected, this is just good for any six skull playthrough. Um, you can kill bulls without even having to shoot them in the back. You can kill infectors before they get a chance to shoot you at all. And uh, this will take out screamers in like one to two shots usually. Overall, very good build. All right, guys, so that has been my explosive ammo fixer build. Um, pretty much the best character, in my opinion, to create your own holding points. And it just makes situations where you're stuck in one spot a lot easier. Uh, definitely give it a go, especially for anyone that's getting bored of just your stereotypical masking grenade fixer. And uh, yeah. Without further ado guys, let's get you guys out of here. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Thumbs up to help the channel immensely. Uh, comment down below how you feel about the build. Maybe uh, any things that you'd want to tweak or maybe any questions that you have. Or comment down below and let me know any other builds that you'd like me to do. Um, if you're new to the channel and you like this one, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Without further ado guys, I have been Killcast. You guys have been absolutely fantastic. And I cannot wait to see you in the next one. Bye bye